Go. Hello, my dear students, and welcome to video help session for our second set of exercises from Chapter 4, where we're studying reactions that happen in water. And that one of the main types of reactions that happens in water is one called a neutralization reaction, where we mix an acid and a base. And of course, the chapter started out with a discussion of what's an acid and what's a base. And we have our classical Arrhenius definition of an acid, and that's something that produces H+, plus, right? If you produce H+, plus, that's what we measure. You know, that's an acid. It's what we measure with pH. Remember this pH, it's equal to minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Two things. This is an inverse relationship. So the lower the pH, the higher the hydrogen ion concentration. And it's a log relationship, a logarithmic relationship, which mm -hmm. means a difference between one and two is not double, but 10 times. Okay, so every time you change, it's a tenfold change. Please excuse my new puppy playing in the background. He decides to wake up as soon as I start recording. Now. Get you on camera. This is what you're hearing in the background. Don't <laughs> kiss me. So, um, his name is Chevy. He's getting big. I think you've seen him in some of the others. And he's a puppy. And he's a little rambunctious. And it's raining outside. So I can't dump him outside. I apologize for the noise in the background. We'll just talk over him. Just like a noisy classroom. So, it asks us, you know, to identify these compounds as an acid base or a salt. And Arrhenius also said, you know, anything that produces OH minus is a base. Because, you know, if you have a lot of potassium, this hydroxide ion, that's what gives you the OH minus that raises your pH and um, is the predominant species relative to the H plus when you go above seven. At the high pHs, you have very low hydrogen ion concentration, but high basic hydroxide concentration. Now, you know, Bromstead Lowry said, wait, anything that lowers the pH should be an acid even if it isn't producing H plus specifically, maybe it's soaking up the OH or something that is a base may not be giving OH minus as long as it's lowering the H plus or soaking up the OH. So that complicates some of our definitions and yet simplifies other things. So calcium carbonate is a salt. That's your answer and that's the answer I will take. Okay, it's a salt because you don't see any way this can produce H or OH. This is the common number two is the common substance baking soda. Trivially an old name sodium bicarbonate, new name sodium hydrogen carbonate because it breaks down into Na plus plus HCO3 minus. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. But if I make a solution of calcium carbonate, which is really pretty insoluble, you have to remember this is a salt, but it's a salt of a strong base. Alkali group 2 alkaline earth metal calcium. Alkali earth, excuse me, Alkali earth metals, alkali means basic. And if I make a solution of this, this combines with water. 
Instead of writing 2H2O, if you don't mind, I'm going to write 2HOH, okay, and makes this substance. This happens automatically in the water, H2CO3. That's carbonic acid. You might say, okay, well, now it's an acid. Technically, this is classified as a salt of a strong base. It's made by a combination of a strong base and a weak acid, carbonic acid, which naturally happens when carbon dioxide dissolves in water. If we had a lab, and if I had a lab, I would be doing a video demonstration of that. And if we had a lab, you would be doing it in the lab to drive this home. One of the unfortunate disadvantages or negative aspects of taking chemistry online. But this isn't balanced, okay? This CO3, 2 minus, plus 2 waters, also gives you 2 OH minuses. Do you see what I did there? I produced OH minus by putting this salt into water. So, it's also a weak base. Now, we didn't talk about strong and weak bases, and we won't do that until we get to acid-base equilibria in chemistry too. But this is why it's important. And this is why the Bronsted-Lowry definition is important. Ditto for this sodium bicarbonate. It is a salt, but it has basic attributes because when you have this bicarbonate anion, it will combine with a single water. If you don't mind, I'd like to write it as HOH. What am I going to make? H2CO3, carbonic acid, plus an OH minus. This raises the pH. That's a base. So sometimes people call this a salt with basic attributes or, you know, a very weak base. But for our purposes, it is a salt because we want to go with our definitions that say, do you produce H plus or OH minus? So let's go to the other ones real fast so we can move on to the second page. This one is sulfuric acid, one of the strong acids, at least for the first H+. This breaks down into H+, plus plus HSO4-. minus. That's an acid. Proton donor. Something that donates, produces H+, plus when dissolved in water, since we're talking aqueous solutions. The next one's calcium chloride. That is a salt. Though it is made from a base, calcium hydroxide, and an acid, hydrochloric acid, mixed together that formed that acid base, as we'll see in the next part of the assignment, in a neutralization reaction, formed a salt plus water. But this is a salt, calcium chloride. Barium hydroxide. Okay, this breaks down. We have to question solubility all the time with these hydroxides, but into Ba2 plus and OH minus. Of course, you get two of them. And this is your base. So this was a salt. This one is a base. If you see that OH minus, it's a base. That OH polyatomic anion. It's a base. If you see something being a proton donor, it's an acid. So, uh, where am I? Three acid, four salt, five base. Six is ammonia. Uh-oh, we have another problem here. This is a gas. It's a weak base. Forget about what you think ammonia is when you go to Walmart and buy ammonia. Ammonia is a gas. It has a simple formula of NH3. But as soon as I add this ammonia to water, 
My brand new Expo markers have gotten flattened, so I'm having trouble riding with them. I'm going to put these together to make this compound. NH4, that's the ammonium ion with a positive charge, OH. This is known as ammonium hydroxide. Anytime you hear that hydroxide, that's a base. It doesn't dissociate completely, and actually this is an equilibrium between the two. That's why when you put your nose over a solution of ammonium hydroxide, you can smell the ammonia gas. It's used to wake people up, uh, or used to be. This reaction is reversible, but you make this, and of course this is a weak base. It's weak because it doesn't dissociate completely, but it's strong enough to be an electrolyte and carry a current. NH4 plus plus OH minus. This raises the pH to no H. So ammonia, ammonia gas is just a gas. It's a compound, molecular compound. But when you put it into water, an aqueous solution, it's a weak base. It's a base. So we're going to call this a base. Uh, number seven is ammonium chloride. <sighs> you know, the same thing happens, okay? Because when this ammonium chloride dissociates into chloride ions and ammonium ions, NH4+, plus, the same thing happens. This NH4+, plus, if I can just do this separately, this will combine with water, okay, to form... NH4OH, okay, plus H plus. So this is a salt. It's called ammonium chloride. But because of the way it reacts when it dissolves in water, we haven't had the opportunity to go to the lab and investigate this. Measure these things with litmus paper and pH meters, titrate solutions of them. But this, it's actually a weak acid, um, weakly acidic salt, I guess is what you could call it. But for our purposes, it's a salt. Uh, did I write the other ones down? No. So we have three more, and I will... Draw those out over here. So, they're very simple ones. Relatively straightforward. This is that acid that forms when you dissolve carbon dioxide in water. It's called carbonic acid, H2CO3. And it breaks down into H plus plus the bicarbonate, sorry, I'm old, the hydrogen carbonate anion, acid. Proton donor, okay? Number nine is acetic acid, sometimes written, most people hate that, but CH3, COOH, structurally it is a carbon, with three hydrogens attached to it, attached to a carbon, like so. And these oxygens are very electronegative. We're going to talk about that in two chapters when we talk about periodic properties. But they're electron withdrawing, and they pull the electrons away from the hydrogen such that it pops off very easily, giving the acetate anion plus H plus. This hydrogen pops off. This is acetic acid. And actually in solution, this is a reversible reaction. It does not completely dissociate. As soon as these are made, some of them go back together. Uh, likewise with this weak acid, carbonic acid. This is the acid in your Diet Coke. 
made by putting CO2 into water to make that, which dissociates into that. That's why your Diet Coke turns litmus paper pink and gives an acid reaction. So again, this one is an acid. And number 10 is a very common base. You know it as lye, although historically potassium hydroxide can be named as lye too. This sodium hydroxide breaks down into sodium ions plus hydroxide ions, and there is your base. So, for our purposes, if it produces an H+, plus, it is an acid, and if it produces an OH-, minus, it is a base, and if it is an ionic compound, otherwise it is a salt. The ammonia was a trick question, but everybody should know about that ammonia and that carbon dioxide's unique and very common occurrence when dealing with aqueous solutions because there's carbon dioxide in the air and it's in all water. So let me uh, move on to the second page. It gives you a series of reactions and it wants you to name them. And these are all neutralization reactions, okay? And barium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid. Let's do the dance. The barium is going to go with the sulfate. And the hydrogen is going to go with the OH. It's going to give me barium sulfate. Um, insoluble, I believe. And plus H2O. And it says... Given the following base acid, identify the acid in the base and write a balanced chemical equation. Well, I have two hydrogens and two hydroxides here, so I need a two there. And I have one barium and one sulfate, so this is now balanced. My coefficients are one, one, and one. And this is question 11. And this is what happens. This is the base, okay? because it has the OH. And this is the acid, because it dissociates into the H+. I'm not gonna go through and do the complete ionic equation, but this breaks down into barium two plus ions and two OH minus ions. This breaks down into two H plus cations and one SO4 two minus ions. So this, is your reaction. If you want to put your state functions in there, you can, but you don't have to. It just said balance it, okay? And that's a liquid. But this is what happens when you mix an acid and a base. What do you form in a neutralization reaction? This is kind of a double displacement reaction as well, but because it involves an acid and a base, we call it a neutralization reaction because you start with something very basic, something very acidic, and they neutralize each other. And you end up with a more neutral pH. But when you do a neutralization reaction, you have two products, a salt and water. You form a salt and you form water. And we're gonna do that in every one of these. Lithium hydroxide plus nitric acid forms lithium nitrate, that's my salt, plus the lithium went with the nitrate. So this is my base, and this is my acid in number 12. And the OH goes with the H, HOH or H2O, and 111 across the board. You know, your coefficients are one. You don't need to put the one in, the one is understood. But again, I mixed a base and an acid, and I made a salt and water. You can write that as more properly, of course, as H2O, like I did in the first one. Number 13, two more. 
We'll go through them quickly. Sodium hydroxide plus hydrobromic acid. Okay. The sodium goes with the Br, so I'm going to form sodium bromide. If you want to do your state functions, that one is soluble. And HOH or H2O, water. And this is balanced. All my coefficients are one. A one to one reaction. The hydrogen bromide, hydrobromic acid is aqueous. The sodium hydroxide is aqueous in water. And you can describe this as water and water or aqueous, but it's just a liquid that adds up. Here's my next one and last one calcium hydroxide. Calcium is group two metal, so it's plus two charge. OH is always minus one. And this one, which is my perchloric acid, um, chloric acid would just be ClO3. Uh, this is much more common. It's a fairly common laboratory react, uh, acid. Calcium chlorate. Calcium chlorate, okay. And, like most chlorate salts, I believe that's soluble. Plus uh, HClO4. So... Um, I'm going to need two of those, and I'm going to make two waters. So one calcium, two chlorates, one calcium, two chlorates, two OHs combined with two H's to make two waters. And that's your balanced reaction. We take a base. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your base. This is that OH. This is your acid because it dissociates into the H plus plus the Cl minus. This one's your acid. This one's your base. The previous one. And I made a salt and water. Neutralization reaction. Okay. Mixing an acid and a base. Uh, something that has to be done carefully and with dilute solutions and there are rules for doing it in the lab, but um, we're not going to have the kind of laboratory experience we really need. But uh, otherwise, that's an important concept. The neutralization reaction for acids in solution, in aqueous solution. Next, we'll do a video help session for your assignment over oxidation reduction reactions and then talk about some solution stoichiometry in the final assignment for chapter four. I'll get those and probably the new material for chapter five uh, posted uh, soon after you see this video help session being posted. Until then, once again, stay safe. And goodbye now.